Section intro, disabled people fight back. Disabled people have been fighting against discrimination and injustice for centuries. As long ago as 1620, patients of the notorious Bethlehem Hospital, better known as Bedlam, presented a petition to the House of Lords expressing concerns over conditions for inmates. The first official organisation of disabled people was the British Deaf and Dumb Association, formed in 1890. In the same decade, the National League of the Blind was founded. In 1920, its members marched to London. This tactic inspired other protest marches, including the Jarrow March of 1936. In the 1950s, a campaign for independent living for disabled people led to the formulation of a new idea, the social model of disability. This focused on the disabling barriers in society rather than people's impairments. By the 1980s, the disabled people's movement had grown and disabled people started to campaign for anti-discrimination legislation. Despite progress made in the decades that followed, disabled people's fight for justice is as important as ever. The fight back against oppression continues. Disabled People Fight Back Banner by Ed Hall, 2015. This banner was created as part of a collaborative project between the People's History Museum and Full Circle Arts called Dis Banners. The banner maker Ed Hall worked with disabled people across northwest England to design large scale banners addressing issues of disability and austerity. Disabled people often use the slogan, Nothing About Us Without Us, in their activism to communicate the idea that no decision should be made by anyone without the involvement of members of the group affected by that decision. Subsection Intro – Deaf Liberation Now Deaf people have been fighting for the right to communicate in sign language since 1880. Delegates of the Second International Congress for Education of the Deaf, Milan 1880, voted to ban sign languages from deaf education in favour of speaking, listening and lip-reading. 164 delegates were in attendance, only one was deaf. The repercussions of the ban are still affecting deaf people today. Deaf people immediately started to fight back, forming the National Association of the Deaf and Dumb in 1886. The British Deaf and Dumb Association followed in 1890. Progress was made in 2003 when British Sign Language, BSL, was formally recognised and in 2022 when the BSL Act was passed. The struggle continues as BSL is not taught in schools and deaf people still fight for access to interpreter services. Francis Magan Bronze Bust, 1990. Francis Magan was one of the organisers of the National Conference of Adult Deaf and Dumb Missions and Associations in January 1890. The conference aimed to elevate the education and social status of the deaf and dumb. This resulted in the formation of the British Deaf and Dumb Association, BDDA, later known as the British Deaf Association, BDA, in July 1890. Magan was one of its four founders. He believed membership should only be open to deaf people, but this was overruled. This bust was made to mark the BDA's centenary in 1990, on loan from British Deaf History Society Deaf Museum. National Union of the Deaf plaque, around 1976. The National Union of the Deaf, NUD, was formed in March 1976. It was deaf-led and self-funded. The group's aim was to restore the rights of the deaf, and it focused on sign language as a civil right. The Latin text on the plaque translates as Knowledgeable and Supportive Supervision, on loan from British Deaf History Society Deaf Museum. Federation of Deaf People, FDP, BSL March Poster, 2003. Recognised BSL Now Campaign Poster, 2003. Deaf people have fought for many years for British Sign Language, BSL, to be recognised as a language. The FDP organised the first BSL Recognition March in 1999. This national campaign attracted thousands of deaf people and led to the creation of a deaf network. The campaign was partly successful on 18th of March 2003 when a government statement formally recognised BSL. This step, though historically significant, was not enough to ensure deaf people had the legal protection to insist on their right to communicate in BSL. On loan from Jen Dodds. Photographs of marches for British Sign Language, BSL recognition. 
2000. Demonstrations took place across the UK in 2000 as the campaign for the recognition of BSL gathered pace. These photographs were from rallies in Nottingham and London, courtesy of Jen Dodds. BSL Act Now, photographed by Victoria Jones, 2022. In this image, school children are taking part in a rally in support of British Sign Language, BSL, achieving greater recognition. Despite the formal recognition of BSL in 2003, Deaf campaigners realised that BSL still did not have the same status as other languages. The struggle continued, leading to the BSL Act passing into law on 28th of April 2022. Courtesy of PA Images, Alamy Stock Photo. Visual T-shirt, 2002. This T-shirt was used to raise awareness of British Sign Language, BSL, at Landrelow College, and was used at a march in 2002 in Trafalgar Square, London, that was demanding recognition of BSL. BSL is a visual language, and the word visual is prominently spelt out vertically down the centre of the T-shirt. The slogan, Every individual deserves equality, change policies, features on six horizontal lines which intersect with the word visual. On loan from British Deaf History Society Deaf Museum. Subsection intro. Solidarity. Disabled people have actively campaigned on a wide range of issues beyond those directly linked to disabled people's rights. Chartist leader William Cuffey and suffragette Rosa May Billinghurst campaigned for the right to vote, and disabled people have been prominent in campaigns including animal rights, anti-apartheid and climate change. William Cuffey after William Paul Dowling, lithograph, 1848. William Cuffey is an excellent example of the way that disabled people have led political revolt. He was a Chartist leader in the early 19th century, a working class movement campaigning for political reform. He has been recognised as a black revolutionary and should be regarded as an important figure in the history of disabled people's political action. Courtesy of the National Portrait Gallery, London. Photograph of Rosa May Billinghurst being arrested. 1908. Rosa May Billinghurst joined the Women's Social and Political Union, WSPU, in 1907. She would go on to found the Greenwich branch of the WSPU in 1910. Although she was known as the Cripple Suffragette, she was not the only disabled woman in the movement. Although police often disabled her by attacking the adapted tricycle she used, she also used it to her advantage charging the opposition with her trike and crutches, or hiding stones for window smashing under her blanket. Courtesy of the Women's Library, LSE. Stoke Mandeville anti-apartheid picket photograph, 1981. Disabled people actively campaigned against apartheid in South Africa. Here are pictures showing disabled people involved in an anti-apartheid picket against South African participation in the 1982 Stoke Mandeville International Games, which were a forerunner of the Paralympics. Bernard Leach's letter withdrawing from Stoke Mandeville Games, 1981. This is the letter from athlete Bernard Leach when he announced that he would boycott the Stoke Mandeville International Games unless the South African team was excluded. He was selected to compete for Great Britain in several swimming events at the Competition for Disabled People, but when he heard that South Africa was sending a team, he felt that he had no option but to withdraw. Photograph of Sue Croshaw speaking in Trafalgar Square, London, at World Day for Laboratory Animals, 1984. Sue Croshaw was one of the founders of Disabled Against Animal Research and Exploitation, DARE. It was set up in the 1980s by a group of disabled people against animal testing who campaigned for animal rights, courtesy of Disabled People's Archive. Subsection Intro Autistic Rights Movement the autistic rights movement is based around autistic people's self-determinism. The movement believes autism is simply a different way of functioning. The internet has been an important space for the development of the movement, with key groups starting out as online forums. This was a new tactic, decreasing the social skills required to engage and increasing the international dimension of the movement. There are also in-person events and physical protests. The movement challenges the use of intervention therapies and medication to modify behaviour and those that claim to cure autism. 
They also call upon organisations to become more autism friendly. London Autistic Rights Movement, LARM, Protest Photographs, 2012. LARM was set up in 2007 following the need for an autism-led political campaign group in the UK being discussed at Autscape 2007. LARM aims to change the way society treats autistic people. They do this by campaigning for the rights of autistic people, including the inclusion of autistic people in decision-making about autistic people, and for comprehensive and appropriate services for all autistic people. Courtesy of London Autistic Rights Movement. Facts to Protest Photograph, 2020. Quote, On 26th of January 2020, Autistic Inclusive Meets protested the screening of Vax 2, The People's Truth, an anti-vaccination film, at the Tabernacle Theatre in London. Fifteen adults stood outside the venue in peaceful protest against the film, which brands autistic people as vaccine-damaged, and was produced by Andrew Wakefield, who published the original paper falsely claiming a link between the MMR vaccine and autism. Emma Dalmain. Image courtesy of Emma Dalmain. Boycott Spectrum 10K protest photographs, 2021. Quote, These images are from a protest at the Spectrum 10K study outside the Autism Research Centre in Cambridge. Spectrum 10K is a study that proposes to gather the DNA of 10,000 autistic individuals with the supposed aim of research into providing more support. It all looks wonderful on the surface. The fact that there will be no safeguarding over the DNA, that it is open for any researcher to access, is quite frankly terrifying. We as autistic people have valid concerns over who will assess the DNA. Emma Dalmain, image courtesy of Emma Dalmain. National Union of the Deaf, NUD, Manifesto, 1976. This document laid out the need for the NUD and its aims and objectives. The manifesto was co-authored by NUD founders Dr Paddy Ladd and Raymond Lee, courtesy of the University of Manchester. The Federation of Deaf People, FDP, leaflet, around 1998. The FDP was set up in 1998 by Doug Alker, a former chair of the British Deaf Association, BDA, and the Royal National Institute for the Deaf, RNID. He was frustrated by the tame approach taken by these charities. The FDP campaigned for the rights of deaf people and the recognition of British Sign Language, on loan from Jen Dodds. Charter of Deaf Rights Document, 2002. This charter was created by the Federation of Deaf People, FDP. They campaigned for the rights of deaf people to be able to access British Sign Language, BSL, and for information to be available in BSL, on loan from Jen Dodds. Derbyshire Coalition of Disabled Peoples, The Quiet Revolution Pamphlet, 1980s. There is a rich history in Derbyshire of radical campaigning by disabled people, including the creation of the first coalition of disabled people in Britain. The coalition played an active part in the establishment of both the British Council of Organisations of Disabled People and the Disabled People's International. The formation of these organisations in the early 1980s led to many other organisations controlled by disabled people developing throughout the 1980s. Disabled People's Direct Action Network, DAN, Northwest Flyer, 1990s. DAN is a collective of disabled people who use civil disobedience to campaign for civil rights for all disabled people. DAN had a national remit, but it was up to local disabled people to organise in their local areas. Active DAN groups sprang up all over the country. Northwest England, West Yorkshire, Derbyshire, London and Bristol, among others, all had active groups. DAN Newsletter, June 1999. Dan was unfunded. The people who went on actions funded the group. Group members self-organised the creation and printing of flyers and newsletters like this one. On loan from Ruth Malkin. Coalition magazine, September 1992. Coalition is the official magazine of the GMCDP. It was first published in 1986 as an information news sheet, but quickly developed into an important forum for debate analysis and expression of opinion on all issues relating to disabled people. The magazine has gained a strong national and international reputation. Rights for Disabled People Now Mug, 1994.
quote, This mug was bought whilst at a Rights Now protest in Trafalgar Square in 1994, when we were campaigning for a change in law to prevent discrimination against disabled people and for a full civil rights law. Sue Ellsgood, on loan from Sue Ellsgood. Rights for Disabled People Now, Press Briefing, 1995. The disabled people's movement fought hard to gain civil rights in the 1990s. This press briefing was a call to continue the fight for a civil rights, disabled persons bill, which had been blocked by the Conservative government despite being popular in Parliament in 1994. On loan from Disabled People's Archive. Subsection intro. Organise. Grassroots self-organisation has been essential in the battle for disabled people's civil rights. The 1980s saw a huge growth in the number of organisations set up and run by disabled people. This was in part due to better funding opportunities following the United Nations International Year of Disabled People in 1981. The first coalition of disabled people was formed in Derbyshire in 1981. It was soon followed by other local coalitions across the country in Greater Manchester, Hampshire and Avon. In the years that follow, many activist networks and disabled people's groups formed. Coming together, sharing ideas and organising protests has been key to the progress of the disabled people's movement, laying the foundation for equality legislation that exists today. Disabled People Against Cuts, DPAC, Nothing About Us Without Us Banner, 2010s. DPAC was set up in 2010 to oppose the vicious and disproportionate impact of austerity on disabled people. It was formed by a group of disabled people after the first mass protest against the austerity cuts and their impact on disabled people, which was held on the 3rd of October 2010 in Birmingham. There are now DPAC branches and members across England and Wales, with a sister organisation, Black Triangle in Scotland, on loan from Manchester Disabled People Against Cuts. Photographs of Rights Now, demonstration in London, 9th of July 1994. The Rights Now protest is a typical example of the ongoing campaigns of many disabled people's groups to put anti-discrimination laws into place. Eventually these struggles for justice resulted in the Disability Discrimination Act in 1995. Tory cuts kill disabled people placard. 2010. Placards such as this have been used in many protests since 2010 against a range of austerity measures which have targeted disabled people, threatening and in many cases ending lives. On loan from Manchester Disabled People Against Cuts. Maximus Killers for Hire placard, around 2015. This is a placard which highlights the private outsourcing company Maximus, who started assessing whether benefits claimants were fit to work in work capability assessments from 2015. The slogan, Killers for Hire, refers to the high numbers of deaths which occurred due to delays or withdrawals of benefit after work assessments. On loan from Manchester Disabled People Against Cuts. Hashtag Stop and Scrap Universal Credit Placard 2016. Disabled People Against the Cuts, DPAC, started the Stop and Scrap Universal Credit campaign in response to criticisms of universal credit. The reforms implemented from 2016 onwards had devastating impacts on many disabled people. On loan from Manchester Disabled People Against Cuts. Hashtag Stop and Scrap Universal Credit protest photograph around 2016, courtesy of Disabled People's Archive. Conservative Party Conference protest, 14th of September 2017. Conservative Party Conference protest, 2019. Disabled People's Direct Action Network, DAN, Conservative Party HQ Demonstration, April 1997. I am not worthless. Hashtag Human Catastrophe Placard, 2017. This placard was used by Sharon Hooley at the anti-austerity protests outside the Conservative Party Conference in Manchester. Sharon and other activists were unable to access the protest area, so moved to block the tram lines at St Peter's Square. This resulted in Sharon's arrest, an operation which was difficult due to an inaccessible police van. Disabled People Against Cuts, DPAC, Baseball Cap, 2020s. Tory Cuts Kill and Stop and Scrap Universal Credit, 
DPIC badges, 2010s. Balls to the Tories, protest ball and image, 2015. Quote, This red ball is one of many hundreds which DPIC threw at Tory MPs as they entered and exited their party conference in Manchester. Although they are harmless, hollow ball pit balls, we had to smuggle them through armed police stops. Courtesy of Rick Burgess. Ball on loan from Manchester Disabled People Against Cuts, DPAC. Photograph, copyright, Stephen Kingston, slash Salford Star. The original PIP, WCA Recording Equipment, 2016. The Department of Work and Pensions, DWP, refused to allow digital recordings of PIP assessment sessions and insisted on tape recordings which had to be made in duplicate and insisted that each party to the assessment must have a copy. This recording kit was designed for disabled and ill people to record PIP and WCA assessments. This was created in 2016 through a collaboration between DPAC and Recovery in the Bin to counteract the frequent inaccuracies in assessment reports. A network across Britain was established of multiple kits, on loan from Manchester Disabled People Against Cuts. Hashtag Millions Missing t-shirt around 2019. This ME action campaign has highlighted the millions who have forgotten or written off, largely due to the ways in which their impairments mean they cannot leave their homes. It has highlighted that there are a multitude of people who feel just as strongly as those who can protest in public. The campaign started before the COVID-19 pandemic, opposing stigmatisation and a lack of appropriate health care and social support. It acquired greater significance during the pandemic due to the tendency to dismiss people with underlying conditions, such as ME people, as having less significant lives and deaths. www.deafpowernow.org t-shirt 2001 this t-shirt advertises the deafpowernow.org website which was set up and run by the deaf liberation front and was active between about 2001 to 2004 greater manchester coalition of disabled people gmcdp banner 2015 this banner was created by wadia ahmed and brian hilton to celebrate gmcdp's 30th anniversary GMCDP was established in 1985 by a group of disabled individuals from Greater Manchester. The coalition and its members have a long record of campaigning for the rights and inclusion of disabled people, running projects specifically with young disabled people, training both disabled and non-disabled people, as well as providing information, advocacy and peer support. GMCDP actively promote the understanding and implementation of the social model of disability, which underpins all its work, on loan from Greater Manchester Coalition of Disabled People. Greater Manchester Coalition of Disabled People, GMCDP, members at Independence Festival Manchester in Albert Square, 1999.